Welcome to this video from In 28 Minute. Thanks for all your love which helped us to grow to 25,000 subscribers on YouTube and more than 46,000 students on Udemy. You can find more about us on our website www.in28minutes.com. This video is a part of series of 100 plus videos celebrating my 15 years of experience with programming, design and architecture. In these videos, we talk about how to become a good programmer and a good architect. We also talk about Java related frameworks, concepts, practices and terminologies other than the varied range of tools that we make use of. You can find more details in the description of the video. In this video, let's look at one of the modern development practices which is called DevOps. The Dev in Dev DevOps stands for development and Ops stands for operations. I mean, typically all enterprise application teams have varied classifications, right? You have a development team, you have a quality assurance team, you have a database administrator, you have other administrators taking care of the servers, you have operations guys taking care of the production environment and you have product, project and release management team. So varied range of teams. One of the uh, things which uh, is found to be a problem is the fact that each of these teams have their own individual aims. Let's take a couple of teams for example. So there's a development team. So what's the aim of a development team? So the aim of the development team is to push a lot of features live. So I would want to make sure that whatever I'm coding today is live. So that's the aim of the development team, right? So they want to deliver, deliver, deliver. And what's the aim of the operations team? The operations team typically wants stability of the production environment. So they are more concerned about making sure that the code in production is very stable. There are not a lot of defects. There is uh, the availability is very high. Uh, there are not of a lot of things breaking. Uh, so that's their aim. So they really want stability. So usually the way it used to work is the development team works on something and they throw it at the operations team. And the operations team would kind of look at it with suspicious eyes and kind of say, okay, uh, they find all the reasons why a specific thing does not go live. Usually like the earlier way of working was uh, each team used to work in silos. So a development team like works with the BAs, identifies the features that are needed and then develops them. And only then the operations team would be involved. So once it's tested and it's thrown at the operations team and then the operations team gets involved. So they say, oh, this is a feature. It would be good to have this kind of logging. It would be good to have this kind of uh, auditing, things like that. So rather than that, uh, the DevOps model is basically where you have operations team as part of your development team. So rather than looking at operations as separate thing where you throw over your code to, it's basically making them part of the entire team from the start. So the operations team is involved with the development from the start. So as soon as you are developing a feature, you actually have a single team. There is no separate development and operations team. So the both teams are merged and the same team is responsible for developing stuff and also maintaining the production environment, making sure that the production. So this team has a common goal. They want to develop and release features responsibly. So now you have one single goal. There is no handoff saying, okay, this is the code and you go ahead and maintain it in production. No. So DevOps is a model where you actually have one team which has complete ownership on all environment. It's not just saying development team owns dev and test and probably QA, uh, the operations team open, owns the UAT and the production. No, so it's the entire development team which includes operations owns all the environments. And the most, one of the uh, things which DevOps brings in is automation. So the way you treat development, uh, like each of the environments is very similar. And so uh, the same way you move like to code to dev is the way you move it to production. I mean, the security rights might be a little different, but the processes, the technology used and all that kind of stuff is the same across the board. And there is single readership and also continuous delivery is possible. So as soon as UAT says this is good, you move it. So 
it's kind of like a developer feature today like uat says it's good it goes live so that's the kind of model that devops enables so that's a quick introduction to devops there's a lot more to it um, maybe when once we have some time we'll create more videos on devops until then thanks for watching this video we created this video to celebrate my 15 years of experience with design architecture and programming we have created two complete git repositories for you java technology for beginners and java best practices java best practices covers my 15 years of experience with design patterns code quality design architecture and modern development practices we talk about rest services soap web services microservices cloud native applications four principles of simple design among a varied range of other topics tells you how to become a good programmer designer or an architect java technology for beginners focuses on the frameworks concepts practices and terminologies and tools related to application development. You can find link to the repositories in the description of the video. In 28 minutes has some of the highest rated courses on varied range of topics. You can find more information on our website www.in28minutes.com.